it's a really powerful way to be coming to like a deeper awareness um, of not who you are as a person. It helps gain like strength internally um, mm. as well, and allowing that security and the confidence that I didn't once have. Um, I've really worked on my self-esteem, and this Kundalini yoga has really helped that. It strengthens like the circulation, the glandular system, your nervous it resets your whole of your nervous system as well. Hey, beautiful souls! Welcome to Soul Awakenings with Madhya Sosan podcast. Today we have Kay Sutcliffe. Kay has been practicing all different types of yoga for nearly two decades, but found Kundalini Yoga in 2015. She was able to achieve that yoga high quicker and faster than any other type of yoga practiced before. After moving back to Manchester from London in 2018, she embarked on a road of personal development and became a Kundalini Yoga teacher. She now shares her love of Kundalini and guides you through a structured class for you to experience personal beliefs and understanding in a deeper, more meaningful way. A Kundalini Yoga experience is a powerful and transformative practice that takes you on a spiritual journey and really helps you to tap into how you're feeling whilst getting out of your head and into your body. K helps you to be with your emotions in a way that will move you from where you are to where you want to be. Let's have a chat with her. Hi Kay, how are you doing? Hi, I'm really good. Thank you so much for having me today. I really yes. love uh, this opportunity to speak to you about what I do. Yeah, I know. It's it's a pleasure. I mean, I was looking for someone who does like Kundalini yoga and you were a perfect fit, <laughs> you know. Um, I was thinking about uh, thinking back where we met and um, actually we we were supposed to go to Spain together to uh, for a spiritual retreat and um, it got obviously with COVID, it got cancelled, but we still met up and um yeah it's just great how everything just came together i was looking for a kundalini yoga teacher to come on my podcast and there you are <laughs> oh fab i know it's such a shame i was so looking forward to getting away and uh in spain for new year yeah and obviously with the travel we weren't able to fly um yeah. but yeah yeah, oh, everything everything went bonkers just a couple of days before <laughs> we arrived. Right. So we were like, no, we're gonna manifest this. <laughs> it was so like a roller coaster journey, wasn't it? It was it so was. emotional. It was like, yes, we're going, no, we're not. No, we're yes, not. we're yeah. going. We can believe this. I think we are. No, we're not. Yeah, yeah we are. No. <laughs> yeah. People around us thought we were crazy for like booking flights to go to Spain at this time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah so um Kay obviously I know um I know who you are and what you do um tell us a bit about yourself for listeners who don't know you yeah so I'm uh, I'm Kay I'm a Kundalini teacher but I also I've spent many years in uh, my con my whole working life as a digital marketing kind of uh contractor I've uh, been in working for big companies throughout my 20s and 30s and um yeah I love traveling um I traveled the world solo um in my late 20s so yeah it was a good time I did 11 months did um Southeast Asia Australia New Zealand um South America as well so I ticked quite a lot off my list I've done about 29 countries I love traveling wow love that's traveling. amazing I've done two so far <laughs> They can get you up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. So that taught me a lot how to be brave. Um, I went off on my own and did that, and it was so nerve wracking. But it's the best decision I ever did. I think. But looking back in my twenties, I was really quite. I was only ever brave if I've got like a bit of a drink in me, and um, underneath that, there was, uh, my self esteem was really like small um but you wouldn't have known it either it was like a bit of a bravado um the stuff that I'm into at the moment obviously we can't travel anywhere so um I all last year I was thinking what did I love as a kid 
Um, so, and I've done this throughout my life. I've swam a lot, but as, um, as a young uh, girl, I swam for Lancashire. Um, I used to swim in clubs like three, four times a week back then. So last last year I went and did that down at Sulphur Keys. So I swam outdoors a lot more. Um, got into cold water therapy mm. in November and I've been ev- every week since. I absolutely love it. Um, so these are kind of like my new hobbies and and what I'm up to at the moment. Mm. I used to be grade A and like cornet player, which is like a trumpet. So I went and bought a trumpet last year and I've been trying to pick that back up. Um, I just love music. I adore music. Um, I think 90% of my waking day I listen to music and um, I... I hardly listen, watch the TV anymore. Yeah, I, um, I make <laughs> yeah, I make sure I dance every day. I love dancing, um, and I like to have a lot of fun. Um, yeah. and don't take myself seriously. So that's kind of yeah, that's like, what life is about. Yeah. yeah, that is yeah. what life is about. You have to enjoy, bring your inner child, and go wild. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, talking about inner child, um how was your childhood like what were you like as a child were you sensitive were you uh, very confident Uh, yeah I was really sensitive um I was always quite quiet as a as a child I don't think a lot of people believe me that that right now but um I'm one of three girls um my parents were really young I think my mum was 22 by the time she had all three of us so uh, I was really young and back then in the 70s and 80s that was kind of a, a done thing. Um, we grew up um, in a really loved environment um, but we were kind of told like little girls should be seen and not heard and I used my little sister as my voice mm-hmm. back then as well so I was, I was always quite shy and quite timid and um, I'd be always like that to my sister, Jane you go and do this you do that, you do this. So I was like the brains behind the operation and she was the voice. Mm. Um, so yeah, it was uh, a really, we were always playing out back then. It's completely different to how it is now. It was um, our house backed onto a field and we were just like out there for hours, just playing. I just remember um, just me and my younger sister um, playing out for hours and yeah we just like I kind of back in the 80s there was no kind of real but we had we had family dinners every week you know we had the family round it was really family orient, orientated a well-loved family mm-hmm. originally like working class background um and my mum and dad have got like you know better jobs and uh, and we went to a good school um and yeah, unfortunately, my mum and dad split up when I was in my twenties. So um, there's like little bits of trauma along the way, but I know we're really loved. Um, like I say, my mum and dad were really young when they had us, so there's that um, kind of what, what I kind of worked on is like the the inner child in me because I was so suppressed as a, as a child. Um, I use my sister as my voice as well so now going on my my journey I I realized when I turned in my teens you know I turned to alcohol and that's when I got my voice and I'm like oh okay this is how it works they get this bravado I feel a lot stronger now Mm. and get some nice friends around me and everybody that's what you did you just went out on a Thursday night and like um go on round oldham i used to go around oldham like thursday night friday night saturday night is a regular thing just doing that circle from the teens and the 20s and then gosh through it like in my mid mid 20s after my mom and dad split up i was just like there was something in me i was like oh i can't deal with this there's something different that i don't want to be in oldham anymore in this circle doing all this um in this vicious circle of like just going out, partying, coming home, going, doing a nine to five job. And something in me was like, well, I wanted to go off traveling. So I booked a one way ticket around the world and I did it. Amazing. And um, yeah, it's the best, the best thing that I ever did. So I know we were like my childhood, looking back, I think we always carried trauma and stuff. Um, I was really well loved. There was like say a bit of trauma uh, throughout you know you growing up and not being able you know holding back my my inner voice as a child and being scared to 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 speak out so this is 
then propelled me onto the journey of where I am now. Yeah, I mean, like you can have, you know, I keep saying to people, you know, some people think that your trauma has to be big, you know, or maybe losing a dad or seeing some, uh, seeing something horrific and that's it. But some, so in some cases, trauma is like subtle and it just kind of just, it's inside of you in your cell memory and plays out, plays out, plays out, plays out until, you know, it plays out in your relationship and your everyday life, adult life. So it carries on. And I, most people that I've interviewed, they've, anything that they've been through big or small they run to alcohol and being in the wrong crowd and drinking and you know partying until they had their spiritual awakening and they're like zen like <laughs> as i always say yeah, <laughs> yeah. so um, yeah so um you know um before we get into what kundalini is tell me about your journey to kundalini oh yeah so in throughout my debaucherous 20s of just um I've had a lot of fun you know um and it was when I still lived back in my hometown in older uh, in Oldham and we went to a local gym and I started I was always kind of working out I'm always quite re- been really active and there was um, a yoga class to trial and it was just amazing I went just once a week for and I noticed such a difference in like, say, two months afterwards, I would come home and, and I remember it was on a Thursday night. And that Thursday night, I slept like an angel. I slept in Shavasana and I woke up um, as I was, I've had the best sleep ever. I'm like, wow, what is this? Mm-hmm. So I'd, it would constantly go back to the mat. Um, when I was traveling again, I went to a few little retreats, um, yoga retreats while I was traveling, but again, it was just pure fun. <laughs> but I would say I'd love to go over. I went off traveling again. I would definitely choose a lot more like yoga retreats, etc. Um, and yeah, and when I came back, I then lived in Manchester um, and then I moved with my job to London. So um, I always was active. I was always keep keeping fit and going to any kind of uh, yoga classes when I can. So it's something that I did on a regular basis. So I've been practicing yoga for like 20 years and it was always like really on and off back then. But something always brought me back to the mat. Um, and in my 30s, I worked for big corporate companies in London. Um, it's so expensive for like any yoga studio down down there yeah. that I would um, I call myself a bit of a yoga whore <laughs> because <laughs> the, you'd sign up for 30, do all the free offers yeah. or the, the cheaper offers. So I sign up for 30 days for, the, um, for 30 pounds. <clears throat> and through that, I, um, I signed up to try yoga in Chelsea. And went through um, all the different types of yogas that they did, Ashtanga, Vinyasa, Yin, and there's Kundalini one. And I was like, oh, what is this? So I went in there um, one evening and it was absolutely packed. Everyone's wearing white. I'm like, it's just sit at the back. And I just started doing all these moves. And like your hands up in the air, started chanting. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm absolutely <laughs> loving it. I've um, got my eyes closed. I'm doing all these wacky, wonderful um, like positions. And I came away and I had to cycle back through Battersea Park to where I lived. And I felt like I was flying. Mm. I was like, what is this feeling? What has that class done to me? It was just uh, amazing. Yeah. So I think you know you're always kind of chasing that kind of high that that amazing feeling that just kind of brought me back I was uh having in London especially it's a real hustle and bustle lifestyle you work hard you play hard you know you're mm-hmm. constantly I was constantly away on holidays mm-hmm. um and just a crazy party lifestyle but something always brought me back and once upon Kundalini I was there every week mm-hmm. um it was like the yin to my yang which I needed at that stage because my life was so hectic Mm. so so yeah that's how I found it just um like going to local classes and then just trialing different different um styles a lot of people are not aware of uh, what kundalini is uh, as well so it's um yeah it's it's now brimming to the surface a lot more of uh yeah. yeah yeah no and it's coming yoga and meditation is coming into um like a people's awareness now um mm. only because they're so stressed out now it's available so they are leaning towards it more because they want to de-stress um yeah so 
you know, what is Kundalini Yoga for our listeners who don't know? Yeah, so it's Kundalini means the coil of the hair of the beloved. And it's a dormant energy that's based at the bottom of everyone's spine. Um, and by doing breath work, mantra, mudras with the hand gestures, uh, po- postures, and definitely movement, but it's mainly like repetitive postures. So you're doing the same position for like a couple of minutes. Mm. Um, they really, it really shifts your energy quickly. They call it the yoga of awareness. Mm. Uh, so we do a lot with our eyes closed and it's a really time to a good time to go in. It, it does like shift around the energy from within our bodies and also within our minds. Um, and when we shift around old energy, we get, you know, the moving we get this release and I think that's what I did on the first day where I did it it was just like this release at the same time when I went cold water swimming as well I got a similar effect where I've got this release like this constant kind of um high feeling yeah energy flowing yeah yeah, through you from it's amazing it's a really powerful way to be come into like a deeper awareness um I'm not who you are as a person. It helps gain like strength internally mm. um, as well, and allowing that security and the confidence that I didn't once have. Um, I've really worked on my self-esteem, and this Kundalini Yoga has really helped that. It strengthens like the circulation, the glandular system, your nervous whole, resets your whole of your nervous system as well. Mm um yeah and I think everyone should give it a try yeah <laughs> um it's a bit wacky and wonderful but that's what the beauty of it as well <laughs> yeah well once you kind of tap into the energy like yesterday I was feeling so like stuck I was I did I didn't do kundalini I did normal yoga with there was a bit of kundalini mm. in it and I felt so amazing afterwards you, you can feel the energy before and after you do yoga Definitely. it's incredible it's incredible um, Nobody ever gets off the mat and says, oh, I wish I didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so true. I feel so great now. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, you know, you mentioned like um, people should get into it. So what advice would you give to the listeners who are starting out with Kundalini Yoga? Yeah, well, it's, it is completely different. We wear or we tend to wear all white just to it's more of a pr- protective uh, energy and and like it's, it gives you structure into that awareness as well. Um, we chant, we do a lot of singing, we do a lot of dancing. Um, it's like completely wacky and wonderful different moves that you've never done before. You're like, how does this work? But it does. We're a science, you know. It's all a technology. You know, we're all. Um, uh, for example, when we sit in rock pose, with uh, rock pose, I'll just show you briefly. And for those at, um, who are listening, you're sitting back on your heels onto your bum. Your heels will sit directly into the meridian points in your in your bum cheeks. Mm. So everything's connected, you know, uh, with our energy flow. So it's it's a beautiful way. Um, it's not going to be some for some uh, as well, and and that's fine. You know, there is more tapping into these esoteric kind of spiritual practices now nowadays, and um, it really everyone's becoming a bit more aware of them and wanting to trial them. So it leads really nicely with breath work, um, and it really, you know, I, everything's kind of all connected. If you want looking for something to shift some old patterns, some old wounds, then I really would recommend like kindly trialing. Yeah, yoga. yeah and I try and make it accessible as well and as fun for people um as well because it can be a little bit scary <laughs> yeah it is yeah but when you it's, when you start starting out first time at anything it can be scary um especially you know you, uh, you know we're we're in lockdown it's you know it's different case but when you're actually going to a class and you're kind of shy and nervous about it you know mm. um you know when I first um started doing yoga at a proper class I was right I was right at the back you know with my yeah. mouth was like oh my god what if I do a wrong move and like people behind me is like what the hell is this girl doing and then eventually yeah. I was like the front of it because <laughs> yeah. I knew the moves. <laughs> 
Well, yeah. that's what I love about Kundalini yoga as well. We do a lot with the, your eyes closed. Mm. Um, I always say, leave your ego at the door because it's not one of those classes where you're coming in. And I've been to many of these classes as well where people are, are warming up doing a handstand and it can be really mm. I'm like, well, um, that looks tricky. And yeah, I definitely can't do that move. Mm. <laughs> and and um, people always often say to me as well, you know, I'm not flexible enough for yoga. And I'm like, neither am I I'm, I've got <laughs> yeah. really tight hips I'm actually sat on a bolster right now and yeah. that doesn't matter yeah so it's all about your personal journey so we leave the ego at the door eyes are closed go within and yeah it's time absolutely to totally agree with that so what are the benefits to kundalini yoga spiritually and physically I really think it's got to shift that energy a lot quicker mm. you tap into you you really physically as well um it's and mentally you get that space you get pure moments of stillness of amazingness um that combining all these you know methods of breath work movement mudras mantra that you're you go into a completely different space um where you're tapping into kind of yoga means unite uniting yourself with your infinite self so it's yeah. a really good time to, to tap into you we're constantly looking elsewhere for um to fill that void when it needs to come from within definitely mm. um so um you know we know what uh, kundalini yoga is and um what is the history behind kundalini yoga then yeah so it was hidden uh for many years as a secret um with, within the indian um royal family and because there's been, I hope everyone's probably aware that we've just been a massive shift from the Piscean age into the Aquarian age. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously um, this is the dawn of the edge of the Aquarium. So it started kind of happening about from 2011, that cusp period onwards, and there's a big massive shift last December. But before then, um, the guru knew that, um, that this age was coming. So it couldn't be kept a secret for any longer ran away to the western world and spread the spread the word of kundalini mm. um and yeah here we are today so it's kind of um been taught for thousands of years teacher to student teacher to student like through as they call it a golden chain mm. so um and then yeah like I say, it was sacred in the Indian family lineage and then it, um it was forbidden anywhere else and now it's um, because of the age of Aquarium, Piscean age was all about like um, everything was a secret, many secrets. And I think that's how I was brought up. You know, little girls should be seen and not heard. Lots of patriotism, hierarchy, money and power. Uh, the female energy was suppressed. Um, lots of money, power and control. Now that with the age of Aquarian, nothing's a secret anymore. You yes. know, with the rise of the internet, technology, everything's at our, our fingertips. Everything's speeding up as well. So we're always going, oh my gosh, where's the time gone? Where's the time gone? <laughs> yeah. And these are the main traits of like the Aquarian age that we're moving into. But there's a lot of change, as you can see over the last 20 years. There's so much change. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a, now a time for being compassionate, especially what happened, you know, from last year. And again, there's rise of the female energy. And I'm not just saying just females in general, we've all got masculine and feminine energies. And a lot of our female energy has been suppressed even in males. So it's now rising up this new this new energy. Um, yeah, and yes. uh, it's here to stay <laughs> in yes. the Western world. So, so they say they, uh, the feminine energy is going to be here for quite a while, like because we've mm -hmm. had since the beginning of time, we were in masculine energy, literally yeah. just in masculine energy. So now it, there's 2020, you, no matter how you look at it, was a big, massive year for all around you know collectively um yeah. and yeah so i think they said it's gonna be like for hundreds or even thousands of years of feminine energy and i can't wait for that because we've been longing for this for so long and now it's here and uh, it's just it's it, that's why everything is like so out of alignment with everything <laughs> that's so on. true yeah. it's like um there's so the rise of the shift of this energy is 
everyone's it's making everyone more aware and actually question themselves and think oh my god what's going on you know it, it like I say it's, it's in both masculine and in males and females we've got that um masculine energy it's all about being balanced and now with the rise of it it's going to take a few years but yeah, yeah. there's a so rise the of it age of Aquarius is this going to be the same amount of time or is that a certain set period I think, I think they're all about 2000 years they last for I I might be wrong but that's I think from memory from what I got taught in my Kundalini wow. training I'm yeah. sure yeah and it just kind of when it when we got told about this why we're here the universe mm. They're all about the Piscean age and moving into Aquarius. It was like pennies started dropping for me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this all makes sense now in my life. It was just like, you know, when something really resonates. Yes. And I thought I was just, I was going on a Kundalini uh, tra teacher training for my own personal development mm. initially because um, I hit 40 and I was just like, right, what's next? I need to change my life. Uh, um, and I went on the course, uh, teach training course, and now there's so much information um, that I just want to share it because people need to know this. I can really help people as well. Yeah, absolutely. You, and yeah. yeah, absolutely. The more you, uh, that this is the reason why I created this platform so people mm. can tap into it. I'm just one platform of many, you know, so which is amazing. So how was it brought into the Western world? So it was brought uh, over, um, I think, in the 60s um, by the guru Yogi Bajam. Um, and like I say, he was the one who was like, right, this needs to change and needs to be, people ne need to know about this because of the Aquarian age coming. So that's how it's brought over. He ran away from the royal family and spread the word. Oh so yeah that was in the 60s so it's not really that long ago think yeah. about it i was just yeah. thinking like how um this is completely like different um how you know like in religion like muslims they pray and they like sort of the the prayer pose that they do and the yoga is almost similar um it's like everyone is channeling that um knowledge mm. differently in their different ways of like like seeing it and then they're just giving that knowledge out to the world how they perceiving it <laughs> it's so yeah it's so true everything you know you when we tune in we come into prayer pose and yeah, yeah it's uh, it is all very a lot of it um we we chant the japji in the morning and that's from the it's the Sikh it's a Sikh um practice mm. as well that so it all interlinks with uh religion and spirituality definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's amazing it's amazing I don't know why we fight in over it it's just the same thing just different <laughs> way of doing things yeah uh, <laughs> so how is it different from other forms of yoga so um like compare it to vinyasa for example there's a lot more flow in vin vinyasa um with the yin you hold the postures restorative with this we combine uh, like every kind of form of um kind of movement and you know we're chanting we're singing we're doing breath work um but the postures are more repetitive as well um its purpose is to activate your kundalini energy that dormant energy at the bottom of the spine or it's called the shakti energy and um yeah it's your spiritual energy and you're trying to kind of shake it up and then that's kind of when you get those yoga high and just the, those glimpses of amazingness uh throughout it really does awaken your energy um and then it enhances your awareness um, and help you to move past your ego as well mm. yeah so I think it's just kind of combining quite a lot of um, different aspects whereas like uh, within I mean obviously you breathe in vinyasa but it's different types of breath work that we'll be doing so and um, like mantras and mudras which mm. you do with your hands as well so there's yeah, we've got it all going on in the space of like an hour and a half. It's yeah. great. <laughs> it is, it is. It's great. So now you just mentioned uh, mudras. Um, uh, what are mudras? Is that how you pronounce it? 
Mudra, yeah, yeah, mudra. I like how you the mudra, yeah, mudra. <laughs> the, mudra. mudra. <laughs> the sensations from your hands are uh, the largest representation on the brain. Mm. So joining your fingers together um, can uh, create like a particular energy, and depending on the um, the mudra chosen, you can really start to stimulate uh, different energies mm. so we're actually all our fingers are related to a planet so mm. your your th first one is mars and when you're linking your first thumb uh, first finger and your thumb your index finger this is gyan mudra which is your most um people know this one the most and mm. uh, this is all about knowledge and wisdom and logic and it produces the calmness as well when we sit there we meditate and then put our hands into gear mudra and um, the second is obviously this index finger is related to jupiter mm. and that's the knowledge sorry yeah calm um and it goes down this is the middle one is saturn which is all about patience discernment uh commitment and then we've got the sun energy with your ring finger and then um, I think the last one is Mercury, which is all about yeah communi uh, communication. communication. Yeah. Yeah. So the sun is all about good health and um, lots of energy and your nervous system to your nervous system. Yeah. So so when you're going through your Saturn return, <laughs> you yeah. Yeah. when you're going through Mercury retrograde, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, get your little pinkies out. <laughs> Doing lots of um, different mudras with, with your uh, little pinky finger. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> that's incredible. I didn't even know anything anything about it. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's all right. Um, so um, what are the different types of breath work? I know breath of fire is one of them. Yeah, um, there's so many different ones that we use throughout. Breath of fire is amazing. It's a really stimulating, but also... Um, decreasing of stress filling up our lungs um cleansing our lungs as well cleansing our blood um we it's like a really powerful breath that you do from the diaphragm so if everyone wants to put their hand on the diaphragm and we take an inhale but it's mainly focused on the exhale through all through our nose mm -hmm. so it's a continuous breath i'll just demonstrate quickly so So you're kind of really pumping from the navel, but it's a continuous quick inhale and exhale. We're born with so many breaths um, throughout our lives. And by doing breath of fire, we're extending our life because we're doing a continuous breath, not breathing in and, breathe, and breathing out where it's continuous. So that's really good. Uh, yeah. We've got I I kind of I kind of struggle with breath of fire. <laughs> really a lot of people do. do yeah, <laughs> I've yeah. heard that before. It's practice. Yeah. Um, with it, and how how what do you find? Do you get lightheaded with it or? Uh no, I just can't continue with it. I just do like um uh like five seconds of it, and then that's it. I'm done. <laughs> Especially you know, <laughs> when you pump in the navel, it's like yeah, you you constantly pump in the navel, and my my stomach is like, all right, I'm about to give up now. <laughs> <laughs> it, it does come with practice definitely and yeah. once you get into it it becomes like um really meditative as well it's so good for us there's different mm. lots of different types of breath, uh, breath. they've got the satali breath where you curl your tongue mm. and breathe through your through your tongue or through an open tongue to a curled tongue and that's really good for cooling if you've got any kind of heat or inflammation in the body i've got a fever that's a really good amazing breath to use mm. Um, the benefits of long, just long, deep breathing, like sending your breath deep into your belly, expanding your rib cage, all the way up to your collarbone, just sending that breath deeper and deeper. We are so much in fight or flight at the moment, just breathing from our chest mm. that we forget to send the breath deeper. And when we do, that really helps decrease our stress, increases calm. Mm. It can relieve pain as well um, and um, helps to improve immunity lowers our blood pressure, improves our digestion, because you think about it, you're sending all that breath down to your stomach mm. as well. So it's getting some oxygen to it. So it's so many be benefits. Mm. And it helps us because we can sit up right and it helps us support our posture as well. Mm. 
there's many, many benefits to the different styles of breathing, so many different types as well. So what, what are the other types that, um, if for stress or anything like that? I would I'll definitely come back to long, deep breathing for stress. Right, okay. Just for closing down your eyes and just sending it deep. Mm. Breath of fire, I think, yeah. is really good. Yeah. And also to calming down is your alternate nostrils as well. So we um, we alternate our breathing without us even realizing through each nostril throughout the day. So our, our left side is for, I can't I remember if it's cooling. Mm. And our right side is for energy. Mm. So if ever you're feeling really stressed, is close down your right nostril and just breathe through your left nice, long and slow. And just come back into that state and just, mm. or even alternate no, nostril breathing, like close down one nostril, breathe in through the left mm. and then close down the left and breathe out through the right, back in through the right and then out through the left. That's a really nice calming grounding practice as mm. well. Mm. I kind of struggle with... Um... You know, when you do the deep breaths, after like three seconds, it feels like I'm full and I can't yeah. take any more. <laughs> I don't know how I can. Oh, the, the, the class, the yoga class that I go to, the breathwork class, and she, she goes on for like ages and ages and ages. I'm like, I cannot do it. <laughs> for three seconds. It's, it all comes down to practice, practice, mm-hmm. practice. Yeah, and so, I guess like people who've suffered from anxiety uh, quite mm-hmm. a lot, they, they their breaths are quite shallow. So yeah. it's it's like finding that pattern and habit again to breathe properly and deeply, you know, because yeah. that's how we we kind of rewire ourselves to breathe that way. You know, shallow breaths and quick breaths and panicky ones. Yeah. Um, Definitely, yeah. It's um um the more practice if you're finding it difficult eh, the more practice you need unfortunately sorry to say that as yeah. well it all does come back down to your prana and your life force and to be able to catch your breath as well like your mouth breather mm. um it's it's so we it really uh, we do really need to breathe through our noses that's mm. what we've got nose hairs to filter mm. all the crap yeah. out <laughs> yeah. and um mouth breathing can really like detach your jaw and rearrange your face because you're you're breathing through your mouth i can um, have so many different side effects there's a really good book called breathe and i can't remember the author hmm. uh, but I'd, I'd get everyone to read it sorry i'll um, send you a message after <laughs> if you want to put it on the subtitle <laughs> uh, amazing amazing thank you um so um you know, I listen to and chant mantras most of the time. That's like, that's my Spotify playlist done <laughs> all day, every day. Um, so for our listeners who don't know what mantras are, what what are the mantras and what is the benefits of it? Yeah, so man means mind and tra is to kind of tune the vibration. Mm. So um, this, this is like the sound currents that tunes the mental vibrations throughout your body. Uh, It's a repetitive sound, majority of of mantra. Um, And it used to kind of penetrate the depths of like your unconscious mind. Um, When we chant, we really kind of get into the rhythm. For me throughout lockdown, it was amazing. It used used to really get lost and takes you to a different place. And, Mm. you know, thoughts still come in and you'll never switch your thoughts off as well. But it really allows that space to come through with it. And also the act of your tongue, or like pressing against all the different, uh, we've got 84 different meridian points in our mouth. Really? Um, yeah. So again, we're a science, we're a technology. So when we chant and recite a mantra, you're hitting the palate with your tongue um, throughout all these different meridian points, which sends nice vibrations down throughout your cells and get all your cells in your body get that lovely vibration mm-hmm. throughout. So once you're still after a mantra, you can still feel like this nice buzzing feeling afterwards as well. So there's just so many benefits to it. Yeah. Can we do one together? Yeah. Okay. So I want you to, as we're doing the chant, we're just chanting sa, ta, na, ma. And as we chant sat, we press our thumbs and index finger. Then ma, you do the middle finger. Na, na. is the, uh, your ring finger. Ma, 
Ma. Is your uh, lip pinky. Okay, yeah. so let's, let's just take an inhale together. And exhale. And let's chant together. Sa, Sa ta, ta, na, na ma. ma. Sa, Sa ta, ta, na, na ma. ma. Sa, Sa ta, ta, na, na ma. ma. Sa, Sa ta, ta, na, ma. ma. Sa, ta, 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 na, ma. ma. Sa, Sa ta, ta, na, ma. Sa, Ta, na, ma. Now take an inhale. And exhale. And just by doing those little rounds, you can really get lost, especially when we've got some music on in the background, you can really get lost. And throughout, especially through COVID or last year, I really got into the habit of um, doing mantra every day. Mm. all day great <laughs> yeah it is yeah i i always um i think whenever i'm stressed out i i listen to and do these mantras and uh, obviously not with the hands or anything because i'm learning about it now um the chanting is like sat narayan wahe guru that's the, one of my favorites that i chant yeah. almost all the time <laughs> and echo yeah, car so nice. guru pasad that's another one now, I've come across people experiencing kundalini awakening. Uh, can you tell us what it is and what happens to you when you go through a kundalini awakening? Yeah, it's a kind of like, um, people think you're going to get that, this big awakening. Mm. Uh, and for me, um, it hasn't happened quite like that, but everybody's different. So it's kind of shifting uh, your your energy. And this doesn't happen overnight as well. So I think people just think, you know, you can um, well, well, one day wake up and you have this big awakening and it doesn't really happen like that. It's just like a process of emotional kind of reckoning. Um, you know, you're going through past experiences, you're dealing with traumas, that you, you're understanding why things happened. Um, you're unpacking years of um, like energy blocks um, that you've kind of like that if you've noticed any certain patterns that have happened in your life like I know I've had millions of not millions um, all like my ex-boyfriends have all been similar kind of played out in a very similar role mm. you know and like looking back on those patterns this is what it's taught me like to unpack that and say right let's get back to the trauma and what how can I heal that what's it it's like um and the you you kind of have moments of like loneliness and feeling like is this all worth it because you you can go through some um to get into the soul, places right? and yeah just like releasing all things that you've held on to and um but there is there is pure joy at the end of it. Trust me, you know, you do come out of it and you're like, oh yeah, this is the reason for this. But sometimes you don't need to know the reason. It could be like stuff that happened whilst you're in the womb or, you know, way before your memory kicked in and you're four or, you know, there's there's so many like uh, synchronicities that start to happen. I see angel numbers all the time. Yeah, um, well. Things happening in like a random way that like were meant that are now meant to be. Just, just kind of little little things like you used to feel a lot more grounded in yourself you're a lot more aware of yourself mm -hmm. and how you are um and you kind of like declutter your life you become mm -hmm. more kind of tapped into you um focusing on you putting yourself first working on you because that's the only time when you can actually help others is if you've gone through it yourself yeah. uh so so yeah. yeah so some people like say it can happen that you are you know have this uh, moment of clarity or and have a big awakening but for me it's happened over last mm -hmm. probably say about five years mm -hmm. even before I was a kundalini yoga teacher I was always like interested in bettering myself and 
I'm wondering why this has happened and being aware of these patterns and mm. why I was like this, etc. So, mm. yeah, I think that's my kind of definition on it. So, yeah. yeah. And um, I think my awakening was quite, it was spontaneous. Poof. Everything no. opened up. It was like a floodgate that opened up and everything was coming in. Like my life was falling apart. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and then it was chaos and blissful at the same time because you feel mm. connected with everything and everyone you know you're you're connected with the source of all things and you become aware of a source of all things and it's just it's just incredible it's just an incredible journey you know um yes, yeah. yeah but i haven't experienced the spine one like you know where i've seen a video mm. of um people just having a rapid kundalini awakening and they're like you know all over the place like on the floors and twitching and you know mm. i've not had that but it's it's quite interesting how um it, you know if you're not ready for it then it could it could turn out really bad right you know you yeah, have to be yeah. ready for it yeah definitely and this practice really helps with that definitely yeah yeah, yeah. um so what are the chakras because i know like in spiritual spiritual world like we talk about chakras all the time right so what mm. are they and how do you unblock them through kundalini yoga so by combining obviously the breath and the movement and the mantra and the mudra through kundalini yoga this travels up our spine through our six main chakras and then obviously out through the seventh which is the crown chakra um, chakra means wheel and they're eight uh, they we also say that there's eight energy vortices um of seven of which are correspond to the areas of the glandular system mm. so it's like where obviously the root chakra is is your anus and as you move up it's all connected to your glandular glandular system throughout the body mm. and the eighth one is that we say is our aura is our electromagnetic field that wraps around us it's all the centers of consciousness mm. and by doing kundalini yoga we can really focus on a, each different chakra to help release any kind of old trauma that you have and so yeah we work really closely with uh, the chakras and kundalini so during our pre-chat you said something really interesting and it was about 10 bodies um so can yeah. you explain to our listeners who don't know what it is yeah, so um, we're not just one body. We're taught that we have 10 bodies. Mm. And if you think about it, we're, you know, this is so true. We have our soul body. So that's our kind of flow of spirit, our infinite connection. Um, and what we tap into is our our soul, our kind of like little inner voice, the good mm. inner voice. <laughs> mm. um, the next one is the, we've got three states in our mind. Uh, the first one is a negative, which we need, which is our, um, it will always kind of prevent us from anything damaging us. So it, it needs to be there. Mm. Um, our positive mind, which works on like, obviously being positive and affirming. Um, and then what happens, and then we've got the third mind, which is the neutral mind, mm. um, which is absorbs and evaluates the positive and the negative, and then assesses to come out with your best. So that's uh, the four bodies so far, so which all makes sense. Um, um, the physical body, which is obviously what we live in, mm. our physical, our body, our temple. Um, our six is our arc line, mm. which is kind of, um, everyone's got an arc line from ear to ear, which runs um, uh, like a halo across everyone's head. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's invisible. Mm. Women have a second one, which is from nipple to nipple across the be breast line which um and it helped this is where our um have our ability to project and our intuition comes from so when our arc line is strong our intuition you know really kind of takes off there really um yeah so it's all kind of linked to our third eye our pituitary gland our arc line all this tapping into our our intuition mm. Um, the seventh is our aura, as I mentioned before, we've got our electromagnetic field. If you ever think, you know, if, um, you know, if you're, you can feel somebody staring at you, you know, when you move your head and somebody's actually looking at you, that's all tapped into your aura. Or if you feel somebody behind you, mm -hmm. 
as well without yeah, you yeah. even looking you sense it this is your your seventh body our aura our um yeah so um energetically our force we've got our pranic body which is our breath our breathing and mm-hmm. uh, the subtle body is when our body is um it's it's kind of interwoven with our soul body so when it leaves when we die our subtle body carries our soul mm. so that's why we need a subtle body mm. and the last one the tenth one is our radiant body so it's tapping it's tap into your real your radiance mm. um it's our courage um again um it's our commitment to ourselves with our radiant body mm. as well so when you split it down into those 10 elements of what makes up what we think is our one body Mm. and we can really then start to think right what actually does need work oh yeah it's my negative mind Mm. you know how can I work on that um but yeah it's all really interesting really interesting it is yeah and I was just uh wanted to ask because like sometimes you know when you're about to meet someone or you never met before or anything like that you kind of just sense them in the aura before they actually mm. come in, in in before you come into contact and I've I, ha- I had that happen to me quite a few times where you know it's like there's someone there that I'm gonna meet and then like literally a couple of days later they're right in front of the yeah that was the energy that I was feeling you know yeah, it's <laughs> it's, crazy isn't it? I know. Love it it's amazing it's like almost at my aura yep there he he, he or she is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. yeah um so um you know we're coming to an end um to this interview okay it's it's been such an awesome awesome interview because i learned so much about i'm sure not just me many of our listeners learned so much about what kundalini yoga is and how it's different from other yogas um so before we leave uh, i want to ask you some rapid fire questions because i do that with all of my guests like you know you're not leaving this podcast without getting grilled <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you can you can answer them quickly or expand on it as a, as much as you want <clears throat> okay, okay are you ready yeah mm-hmm. okay what do you think happens when you die i think uh, we're all infinite souls. Well, I've been told in my yoga actually that when we die, the reason why we do cold showers and cold water therapy is to get us ready for death. We actually have a death weekend that we learn about. Yeah, it was crazy, Whoa, and it is so it's so interesting, and um, it makes you actually become more okay with death. Mm. Um, I'm not afraid of dying. I'm really not. I'm afraid wow. of losing people. Mm. um and that but I know that they will live on so I know that when we die we get this cold feeling over us but I do feel like we're we're infinite souls that we've gone forever and we're here to learn different lessons every every time we come back so that's what I think happens oh that is beautiful that is so beautiful I always say that death is just a promotion it's not really a death yeah next yeah, level of existence <laughs> and yeah you I should guess. be happy about it <laughs> not miserable you just got promoted <laughs> yeah. from <laughs> And they're going to get, hopefully, next time I'm going to come back levitating after all this. Work. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Once we finish the feminine energy, <laughs> I think we <Yeah>. may do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, what is the lesson that took you longest to learn? Oh, gosh, I know this. Definitely to love, honor, appreciate myself, hmm. self-love. It took me the longest. Yeah. I didn't realize like how beautiful I was until I, I, in my thirties and I look back at my, my t- pictures in my twenties and I'm like, Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> and you thought you were fat and ugly and all this. And now it's, it's a struggle. It is, you know, when um loving yourself, but I, I, I love the RuPaul saying, if um, you can't love yourself then nobody else is going to. So it's a, it's a way of life now yeah. to love yourself. Yeah, Definitely. absolutely. Totally agree with that. I'm fully in present moment when? Oh, I'm fully in the present moment. Um, well, I try and live as present as possible now. Because um, like yoga is everywhere. You know, when you're cooking, when you're walking, when you're laughing with your friends. 
but definitely when I'm doing mantra and uh, it makes me so present but I try and um not pick up my phone when I'm reading you know not pick up my phone when I'm with my friends you know being present in that moment and just yeah laughing and not thinking trying to think rush off and uh chase away with your thoughts just always bring it back in the moment try yeah you know when you were talking about your childhood before um Mm. around the 80s and 90s not many people were around their phones a lot right so we were just oh, no. out in the playground just playing and enjoying yeah. ourselves we were being humans <laughs> what we meant to be yeah <laughs> I didn't get a, a phone until I was 21 that's when they first came out mm. so I didn't even know what a phone was a mobile phone was I remember my dad come come home with this big thing like attach a massive battery and we're like what's that my mobile phone I'm like nice <laughs> it was like a brick it was like a brick yeah well, that was a great thing about growing up in the 80s and 90s and you know there was no distra- less distractions for the same yeah totally agree do you believe that there is an end to healing um i think we'll be constantly unraveling ourselves yeah um, I do feel like some some of it can be our ancestor as well and or even past lives as well. So you never know where um, this healing is the best. I always wanted to fathom out, oh, why am I feeling like this? What is this issue? You know, try and fathom out what it is. And my yoga teacher said something so poignant and it was like, just like, well, you never know what it is. You could be, really, as I mentioned before, it could be whilst you're in the room, it could be like during your pregnancy, um, you know, or it could be a past life. You never know where that trauma is. It just needs to come out. Mm. So don't dwell too much on it. So it will have been an to healing, probably not. <laughs> yeah, and there's that. timing. The constant it. journey. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's timing to it. Maybe it'll open up in the next lifetime <laughs> or yeah. another lifetime <laughs> you know like there's so many people in our spiritual communities like i want to get this healing done now but no it, it has to take its time your soul has to yeah. evolve slowly gently and however long it takes to evolve <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> yeah um so one last one the world needs more of what love definitely Hmm. um and I think it's coming back to that now you know this time where people are um are being more adaptable caring um we do need to start less less judgment more love um let go in of any attachments and just yeah apparently I, I listened to a podcast um I think it's a week or so ago and apparently our heartbeats were all come down to the beat of love mm. so that was really nice to, that to was listen beautiful. to that's really beautiful yeah I don't know <laughs> yeah um so one last question before uh we wrap up um what is the one message that you would like to share with someone who's going through adversity right now or going through dark night of the soul, spiritual awakening? What would you tell them? I tell them to keep going, um, journal, reach out to anyone who's kind of going, gone through this, any kind of yoga teacher, um, breathe through it, trial all of these different types of um, healing sound healing and esoteric um we're so adaptable now as well and just kind of um really tap into where you're at what is it you need help with and reach out so being vulnerable is strength um that's I, I broke my foot and it was the biggest wake-up call about being vulnerable because I was never I would never ask for help you know really proud um and I think it's a big, it's a big strength if somebody asks for help and we often don't see it like that. Mm. So I would say reach out, um, get in contact. You know, somebody is always going through something at some point. You're not on your own. Definitely. Totally agree with that. Mm. How can people contact you? Oh, so I'm on um, Facebook and Instagram on my website is yogaandthemove.co.uk. Instagram um, is yogaandthemove um, and same on Facebook. 
yeah and can contact me that way and I have weekly classes at six o'clock on a Wednesday and then doing Monday meditation um, on over lunch break for like half an hour as well and it's, I'm tending to do more and more like monthly workshops um, as well for people and obviously all on Zoom uh, at the moment hopefully I'll be opening up again in, in Manchester I teach at Hilton House which is a beautiful space in the northern quarter so yeah, yeah get in contact I'd love to hear from him, anyone okay amazing thank you so much Kay for coming on this podcast I absolutely loved interviewing you and gained so much knowledge and wisdom from you thank you so much is there anything else that you would like to say no I just wish um, everyone will try Kundalini at least once give it a go give it a whirl don't be afraid of it you know you're not ever I'm not flexible people think that that's what yoga is about it's you know, just um, just really going to have have a laugh with it. That's what I do. I try and make it accessible to everyone because it is wacky and, and weird. And I just try and make it as fun as possible and don't take it seriously. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Lots of love. Thank you so much for listening to Soul Awakenings with Madhya Sosan podcast. I would love to know what your biggest takeaway from this conversation has been. Share your thoughts on my Facebook and Instagram, Madhya Sosan. You can also check out my website, madhyasosan.com. If you would like to watch this episode, then head over to my YouTube channel, Mads Corner, M-A-D-Z Corner. If you enjoyed this episode, then please do rate and share this with your family and friends. Thank you once again, and I will see you on the next episode.